Oh my goodness, everybody. What an exciting day. I can't believe it. We have the one and only Andy Cole in the house from 0260 Labs. And I got to say, um, I didn't personally know Andy. And thanks to Brian Simmons, one of the incredible leaders here inside the community for making the intro. Um, Brian, always a rock star here and, and creating content value for everybody here. Um, I know he's already partnered with Andy. But um, Andy is super well known for doing a whole lot of amazing things in the real estate space, but uh, more than anything is helping agents to achieve top shelf results by creating, scaling, and optimizing systems in a lot of different departments. I'm going to let Andy really drill down on exactly what it is he does. But one of the things that we're going to talk about today is the way that um, the, the AI is taking over the world, is changing the entire space, and how do we stay on the bleeding edge of that so that we're not left in the dust. And Andy, I have to say, this is something I'm super excited about because it's something, honestly, I don't know a ton about and I'm really pumped to learn more about today. So thanks for being here, my friend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I gotta say, I love the hype in this room. I don't, I don't know if you guys Ooh. are feeling that, but man, I, I just realized that I need to step up my Zoom game because it's not nearly on this level. So I, I appreciate you guys oh, having that's awesome. Me. Yeah. Thanks again, um, man. Cool. Uh, so, you know, as far as, um, you know, the, the way that I like to do, you know, these, these sessions, um, I like to make them as much of a two-way conversation as I possibly can. And uh, I'm going to share my screen uh, if that's cool. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And I think we're good. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the way that I like to do these sessions, I mean, this is exactly how we do it, you know, for, you know, for agents that, that we're working with on a daily basis. Um, I, I like to make this as much of a two-way conversation as I possibly can. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to try to get a temperature check from the room, um, from the folks that are in here. Is any, is anybody, even, does, do we know what chat GPT is? Do I need to give like a rundown on this? Like I, I want to try to figure out, you know, how much information that everybody has on chat you, we want using it right now do it do it okay so we got we got sorry go go ahead give it to us because we're new we're new at this <laughs> new. okay so, so it sounds like we got a few people that are using it right now and then we got some people in here that literally have no idea what it is is that correct yes yes okay so let's let's start from the very very beginning so the way that i like to describe uh, describe chat gpt it's like google without the search results so if you think about you know you think about how you use google you go to google searching for information right and and google does a very good job of finding you the best information that's available on the internet chat gpt is like the next version of that and i'll, I'll show you what i mean by the, that in a second but chat gpt sort of takes all of that information and compiles it into an answer it's, it's almost like and this starts, by the way, diving into some you know sort of philosophical questions as well, which I'm not going to talk about on this call today. But it starts it starts it starts it's like do you remember, do you guys remember back in in high school? Uh, you know, may, maybe this is a while ago for some of you guys, but but back in high school, like ha having, and I'm not saying that I ever did this, uh, but it's like having the answers to like the, to cheat on the math test. Does that sort of make sense? So so this this is sort of. You know, the it, it, we live in an interesting world right now, right? We have cars that are driving themselves, Tesla's driving themselves. We've got ChatGPT, which is you know, it's just insane, and it it is it makes getting information very easy. And it, and and the best, you know, the in terms of how this applies for the folks that are on this call, for me, it's the best tool. And I just realized I misspelled this. It's the best tool that I have personally ever found to eliminate writer's block. Does anybody know what writer's block is? Yes. Yeah, we got some nodding heads. Okay. So so to give you some examples of, of scenarios where I think chat GPT is really, really effective. Do we have anybody in here that's running their own Facebook ads at, at all? Few few people, maybe a little bit, not really. We have anybody in here that's writing their own listing descriptions? That should be pretty much everybody in here. Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about listing descriptions. Guys, there's no excuse for you not to have a kick-ass listing description going forward. Like there's no excuse for it now. And I, I remember back when I was when I was actually selling homes, 
writing the listing description, man, I hated that. I, I, it was not, it was not my cup of tea, honestly. Um, you know, I, I got called out a few times because my listing description was, you know, two or three lines. I, I let the professional photos speak for themselves. Right. So, you know, listing descriptions, I think it's, it's incredible for, and I'm going to start writing some of this stuff down. So, you know, use cases for chat GPT. If I can spell correctly this morning. So we've got uh, listing descriptions, Facebook ads. Guys, who, who here is, is anybody in here writing their own blog posts? Yes, no. And I'm, I'm checking. I just saw the, the comments. Uh, I've got the chat up in front of me as well. So it looks like, uh, yeah, Joanne had mentioned like to, to get ideas on, on different words. So it's, it's, it's like a next level th uh, thesaurus. Do you guys use this? Uh, th if I, if I could say this correctly, thesaurus, do you guys use the thesaurus when you're writing your listing descriptions? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's incredible for writing copies. So blogs, it's, it's, you know, it's another use case. Um, you know, th those I think are the, are the ones that I'm using it the most frequently. I, I, I have an email newsletter that I send out once a week to, you know, to, you know, a list of people. I am not, I, and to be clear, there's a couple different ways to use chat GPT, but I, I am using that to help eliminate some writer's block. And I'm, I'm not using it by the way, to create the entire blog post, but I am using it. If let's say I've typed out a sentence and I just I look at the sense I know like I, that's that sentence could be reworded better. I can have ChatGPT rewrite that sentence for me and give me a couple different variations. So what what it's really amazing is it's giving you options, and then you can decide which direction you, that you want to go down. So, uh, in in terms of, I think there's going to be two kinds uh, of people that use ChatGPT. And I'll, I'll try to do my best, you know, in terms of explaining this, you know, th there are, there are going to be those that quite frankly, they, they rely on chat GPT to do everything. And, and they just, you know, they, they don't want to do any of the work at all. And to be honest, I think those individuals are going to get pretty mediocre results. So, but on the flip side of that, for the people that are still wanting to do the work, they just want to make their results even better than they already are. You guys are just gonna love. You guys are gonna love this. If that is, is that, does that make sense? Where I'm coming from? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, and I'm gonna put in here, uh, lazy uh, expecting Chat GPT to do all the work equals mediocre results. Hard working agents doing the work equals amazing results. So we're going to get into, you know, what, what these, uh, you know, what this is essentially going to look like. So I am going to pull up chat GPT and, and I, like I said, I want to make this interactive. So let's, let's start with listing descriptions. I, I saw most people, uh, had, you know, were nodding their heads on listing descriptions. Does anybody have a listing that, that recently went live that they, they e either recently went live or they're making a listing description for it right now. Anybody got anything? I see one hand uh, right here. Jordan, you got something for us? Yeah, I got one coming live here in the, oh, next week. What's what's the address for that one? 4076 West Hearst, which is H-E-A-R-S-T Drive. It's in Meridian, Idaho. You spell that city for me? M E R I D I A N. And that's Idaho. And what's the zip code over there? 83642. So, and, and let's, uh, let's talk about exactly what, what we're looking at here. It's just again, for the people that have not used chat GPT uh, at all. So um, the, software that i'm using right now uh this is actually this is the premium version of this so it's 20 dollars a month i have no affiliation with these guys i think this is the easiest 20 dollars a month that you'll spend on anything honestly if, if you don't get 20 dollars a month out of value of this uh, you're you're just you're well you, you have no excuse after this webinar because we're going to go over this basically so i i recommend you know sign up for the plus version you're not going to experience any of the delays 
uh, a, a lot of times, you know, within the last few weeks, uh, there, it's been it's been hard to actually get access to this because it's overloaded. There's too many people trying to use this. So I recommend signing up for the plus version. So the way chat GPT, this is like the Google search bar down at the bottom here. So what what you can what, what you're going to be doing with this is issuing prompts to, you know, the, the computer, so to speak. The way that I think about this, and again, it's it sounds so crazy to say this. It feels like you know, if, if anybody watched the Jetsons, I feel like I'm dating myself here. Anybody watched the Jetsons back in the day? Yes. So th this is like the Jetsons, but it's like real life, if that makes sense. So I I'm just going to tell Chat GPT to please create a listing description for. 4076 West Hurst Drive, Meridian, Idaho, 83642. Let's see what happens. So welcome to your dream home. This stunning four bedroom, three bath residence is located in the highly sought after uh, Paramount, Paramount subdivision in Meridian, Idaho. With 2,570 square feet of living space, this home offers plenty of room for your family to spread out and relax. As you step inside, you'll be greeted by a spacious, bright living room that boasts high ceilings, large windows, and a cozy fireplace. The open concept design flows seamlessly into the gourmet kitchen, which features beautiful granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, a large center island, and a walk-in pantry. The main level also includes a luxurious master suite complete with a walk-in closet and a spa-like in-suite bathroom with dual vanities, a steep soaking tub, and a separate shower. Two additional bedrooms, two uh, a full bathroom, and a laundry room on the main floor. Uh, complete the main floor. Head upstairs to find a spacious bonus room, an additional bedroom, and a full bathroom, providing the perfect get, uh, space for guests or, uh, or a home office. The backyard is fully fenced in landscape, making it the perfect place to enjoy the beautiful out Idaho outdoors. Located in the heart of Meridian, this home is just minutes away from shopping, dining, entertainment, and top-rated schools. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity to own your dream home in one of Idaho's most desirable communities. So guys, I don't know, I don't know about you. That would have taken me minimum, minimum, like three to four hours to put something out like that. I'd say maybe two hours if I'm if I'm really pushing that. Let's say, like let's say I'm just cr I'm cranking out copy. Maybe it takes me an hour to put something together like that. So, so, there, so there's a couple of things that I want to touch on here real quick. Jordan, is this actually, do, the, do we have the details right here? Or is this not, is, is, any, is any of this incorrect? Um, I think everything is good up until the Paramount subdivision. The Paramount, okay. just, uh, it's just a different subdivision. Different subdivision. But what, what about all of this? Is this all correct? Like granite, I mean, this, you know, granite countertops, gourmet kitchen, that's all correct? Yeah, it seems to be pretty Pretty accurate. Okay, so so here here's what I have found on on listings descriptions uh, presently. They it, it it's about ninety percent accurate. That's been my experience. So you might have to go through and change a few things. But listen, I mean, guys, if I don't have to write another listing description ever again, I'm I'm cool with that. If I if I have to make a few little edits here and there, fine, right. And from a from an agent perspective, so we're talking about uh, uh, Jeff. One of the top, I mean, the, the focus today was really about you know productivity systems, getting uh, getting the most out of your day, guys. I mean, you're you're saving hours, hours. We're not talking about minutes. We're saving hours here. This this means you're able to take on more work, make more money, get get more listings because you're not you're not getting bogged down in the prep of getting the listing up and running. It's just, you know, you know, boom, boom, boom. Right. So, you know, for, hey, again, Andy, yeah, I, I don't ahead. know to what extent you're seeing the chat. Um, <clears throat> one of the guys on here, Chad asked, what about copyright? Like, is this free use? Um, does it change each time you ask it to, you know, write? And also somebody else had mentioned writing it within a certain number of characters or words. Fantastic question. So, so the copyright issue, and, and listen, I'm not an expert on the space, but I listen to a lot of podcasts to you know for people that are a lot smarter than I am on the space. And here's my limited understanding of this: that everything that is being uh, presented to us on the screen, it's the 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 software has been trained on a data set, 
right? And so the question comes into play in terms of the copyright issue, who owns the data set? And, and did that data set, did they give the okay for that, for chat GPT to actually be trained on that data set? So there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of legal battles coming. It, again, people a lot smarter than I am that are going to be having that conversation. The way that I'm looking at this right now, um, you know, if, if you're worried about copyright stuff, I, I would simply pull this up, you know, take this, take this listing description and pull this up and drop it in Google. Does this already exist somewhere? Right? So we've got a couple items here. So like this, this is the one at the top of the page, but you know, you can sort of see in the, by based on the descriptions here, it's, it's all, you know, there's nothing here that I see that really resembles a hundred percent. What's in, you know, what, what chat GPT just came up with. So, you know, I, I'd say if you're worried about the copywriting stuff, just check it, check it based on what's already on Google. Is that, is that a, is that a reasonable uh, answer for you? I, I don't know. It's a great answer, that. man. And I, I think the other thing that's going to happen, everybody is like, this is brand new territory. There really isn't a lot of like law around intellectual property that's written by a robot for good reason, probably. And so, you know, uh, uh, Lexi's son's becoming an attorney. Like he was chatting about this the other day. It's really interesting what's happening right now, but it's a whole body of new knowledge. And really what's happening here, I'm sure is this is mass aggregation of data from like a million data points. And, and then they just pull it all together. And it's like, the, it's a it's a mixed bag. So chances are, if you use what Andy just said, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Yeah. And, and what, one other thing that I'll mention um, for, 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 you know, copywriting issues like this, they're going after the people with the money. And, and, and we're talking about like the big, the big money. They're not going to go after, you know, people that are using it. They're going after the people that have the money. So for example, Microsoft just put a stake into chat GPT. So if there's going to be lawsuits, it's going to be after the companies. It's not going to go after the users. So, um, okay. And Obvious asterisks on all of that. I'm not a lawyer. Consult your lawyer if you have any other questions about that. Uh, were there? And I, I don't have the hey. chat. I don't have the chat in front of me. Am I missing any other questions here? How old is that chat JJ GPT? Here. Uh, how old? So this this came like the out, data. Uh, the data. Good question. So the data, as far as I know, um, because I'm on the plus version, it's it's a little bit more updated than it is if it's free. The free version, if I'm not mistaken, the data is from 2020. I probably can Google this chat, GPT data age. Let's just see what comes up here. Um, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it's 2020. May it might be 2020, 2018, something like that. Awesome. Yeah, but Carl had asked that, but um, that's really great. And then JJ, I saw that you had unmuted hey. yourself. Yeah. Hey, Andy. So can you um, show everybody on screen right now while you're there? Because someone asked if you can SEO it. I want people to see that it's almost a dial like a dialogue with chat GPT, right? So with exactly what you have there, you can say, now write this um, in a using a thousand character uh, limit and optimize it for SEO. Yeah, 100%. In a 1000 character Limit and optimize for SEO. So now, like now, now we're getting pretty nitty gritty. So, guys, I mean, it, it's like you have a a very very intelligent human that you're talking with, and you can give instructions to that person and get immediate feedback, right? And for anybody that's not familiar with what SEO is, so it's search engine optimization. It's, this is how websites rank on Google. So like all of these websites right here. So let's, let's just do, you know, Idaho homes for sale and let's see what pops up. So Zillow, you know, I, I guess that's a bad example because all the portals are there, but this is the first one that pops up. that looks like it's from a real estate company, right? So, so, and the reason why it's ranking on Google is because of its SEO uh, SEO rankings. Um, but let's, let's go back to this, uh, this listing description. Okay. So write it into, do we say a 1000 character limit or yeah, we did. Yeah. Character limit. So you can have chat GPT literally 
cut the amount of words and give you something that's a little bit more concise. What if, what if you wanted to say, uh, rewrite it, rewrite this with more humor. So if, if you think that it's too, it's too, um, I don't know, too stiff, like put some humor in it, right? Get ready to have your socks knocked off because this four bedroom, three bath home in, the, in Paramount subdivision is about to rock your world. With 2570 square feet of living space, you'll have plenty of room to spread out and live your best life. The living room is so bright and cozy, you'll never want to leave. It's the perfect place to catch up on your Netflix binge watching. And let's talk about the kitchen for a second. It's straight out of a cooking show. Granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, a huge center island, and a walk-in pantry that will make your inner chef jump for joy. I mean, guys, like this is crazy, right? So, so when, I, when I'm saying, you know, there's two kinds of people that are going to be using this, you know, just, you know, lazy, expect chat, chat GPT to do all the work. And, and, you're, and, and by the way, like you're, you're, not, you're not asking for rewrites. That's one of the things that you'll notice right here. We're, we've, we've asked for a couple variations of this. You know, rewrite this into a 1,000 character limit. Now re rewrite it with more humor. How about uh, now rewrite it, uh, rewrite this. Gosh, can't type. Rewrite this in the form of Shakespeare. Is that how you spell Shakespeare? All right, that is how you spell Shakespeare. So let's write it in the in the form of Shakespeare. Hark, behold this wondrous four bed, three bath abode nestled in Paramount sub Paramount subdivisions fair abode. With 2570 feet of space to call your own, thou have enough room to make thyself at home. So it's it's even rhyming. Do you guys see this? It's even creating rhymes for you. I, I don't know what the what the English terminology of this is. Uh, my English teacher from high school would be very disappointed in me, honestly. But the but you got you guys see where you guys see is this opening up your minds a little bit? Yeah, yeah. on what's possible. So so. When, when we're talking about, you know, listing descriptions, guys, like there's no excuse, like, like your listing descriptions should be quick and they should be outstanding because, you know, you're just, you're just typing in a few, few prompts and that's it. Right. You know, make, make sure, you know, make sure that the, the information is accurate, but it's been, I, I've been using this for, you know, for long enough. I, you know, I mean, you'll notice I, I have, I have this on my toolbar up here. So I, I don't I don't even have Google on my bookmarks bar anymore. And there's a very good reason for that. It's been, because I've been using this for long enough. I realized like, you know, this is like the next generation of Google, which is pretty crazy to say. Right. It's like, why, why would I want to go through and read all the different blogs when I'm getting my answers, you know, quickly, you know, right here. Right. And, and it's it's like it's personalized. To what to what I'm looking for? It's like having a personal, you know, assistant that really knows what they're doing. Does anybody have any questions about this so far? Is this helpful? Yes, helpful. Okay, so let's let's talk about a couple other, uh, you know, a couple other ways of doing this. Um, a couple other ways of using this. So, you know, I I I think I saw a couple nodding heads. We've got a couple people running their own Facebook ads in here. Guys, you know, whether it's Facebook ads or you're just writing blog posts on, you know, or not even blog posts, but you're writing like posts on on social media. Does every is it everybody anybody familiar with like the importance of your headlines? You gotta have yes. a, you gotta have your you gotta have your hook capture attention. Yes. So let's let's talk about headlines here real quick. Let's say I want to make a Facebook ad to generate seller leads. Who doesn't want to do that, right? So let's say um, I want to create a Facebook ad for seller uh, leads. Please create 10 headlines uh, to, I don't know, to help me, or 10 headlines for my ad. Let's just see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's just see what happens. So selling your home, let us help you get top dollar. Ready to move on? We'll help you sell your home hassle-free. Time to sell your home, we'll guide you every step of the way. 
looking to sell your home will make it easier than you think. So in terms of, you know, seller leads on Facebook, this is just a help. So, I mean, we, we run a lot of ads. Home valuations are about the easiest way that I have personally found to get, you know, seller leads online. So let's, let's run with this. So thinking of selling your home, get a free home valuation today. So let's, uh, let's ask ChatGPT to come up with some variations of this. Please come up with 10 variations of this headline. So I'm curious to know what your home is worth. Get a valuation today. Want to know how much your home is worth? Get a free valuation. Ready to sell your home? Get a free valuation and make the most of it. Do you, do you guys see, see the, the direction that you can go with this? Yeah. And now let's, let's, let's lighten this up a little bit. Uh, let's take this one. I actually, I, I like this one. Curious what your home is worth? Get a free valuation today. Rewrite this. Rewrite this headline with some humor. <clears throat> Is your hidden is your home a hidden gem or a fixer up or disaster? Find out for free. Guys, that equals click, 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 because you got the attention. Right? E even Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think the the title that we came up with for this webinar today, that was I, I that, yeah. What 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 was the title for this webinar? Uh, I I would literally have to go look. But um, yeah, it was 100% generated on ChatGPT. In fact, yeah. I think uh, it was uh, ChatGPT, supercharge your real estate business with AI. That's what it was. So that, that literally, you know, when Jeff was asking me, like, I need a title for the webinar, that's how I came up with it, right? So, and, and guys, like, you know, it's, it's if, if, you're, if you're already serious about your business, this is a way, again, it's, it's literally exactly what we put in the title. It's taking what you're already good at and it's supercharging it. Making sense? Yeah, helpful. See some nodding. Hey. Any, anybody, anybody got any questions? I see Abe. What's up, Abe? Saw you hop in here. Yeah, buddy. I mean, it's, it's made, made my job easier. Still have to work hard, as you said, um, because... Right now, as you know, we have a training academy over here in Canada, and I use this for my Instagram posts. Like just this morning, I needed to come up with ten motivational, um, motivational quotes to put out on Instagram every day for the next ten days. So I just asked Chap, write ten motivational quotes, and it gave me success in real estate is not a destination; it's a journey. Enjoy every step of the way. Um, the keys to success in real estate is to work hard, stay focused and never give up. Like it was amazing. And it came up with all 10, like it's definitely made me work faster, but it's definitely not easier because you still got to do the work. You, you got, you got to do right? the work, but, but it, it does make getting, if, if you're willing to do the work, it makes getting the end results quicker for sure. Yeah. hundred so, percent. So, you know, 10 motivational quotes for real estate agents. Real estate cannot be lost or st stolen, nor can it be carried away. Purchased with common sense, paid for in full, managed with reasonable care. It's about the safest investment in the world. Um, the best investment uh, the best investment on earth is earth. I like that one. So, you, the, you know. The, go, go ahead. What were you saying? Andy. The the other thing I like about chat is that um, even if you ask it to summarize a book, like I just finished reading The Go-Giver and Go-Giver had so many amazing points. And I just put in chat, hey, have you ever, do you know the book The Go-Giver? And it said, yes. And then I said, can you summarize it for me? And it gave me the five stratospheric stuff, 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 laws. And then I said, break it down. And I just ran it all out. So, you know, it was amazing. It, it's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, you know, when, when I, I remember when, when this initially came out, uh, you know, I, I I'm on, I'm on Twitter and everybody was freaking out about this posting all the insane use cases 
you know, people, there are developers, you know, there, 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 there was one guy and, and this is where I realized like, I got to get on top of this and start figuring this stuff out. This one guy, he, uh, asked chat GPT to create a, an app for him, like a, a mobile app. How, how would I create the mobile app? Please code the app for me. And he actually, like he, he put, uh, he built a working app with this and, and chat GPT coded the whole thing for him. And he is a developer. So, you know, and, and yeah, listen, guys, like it, 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 without question, it starts opening up like philosophical questions. It's like, okay, like what is actually happening here? Which again, I'm not, it's, I'm not here to have that conversation today, but when it comes to how this applies to your business, you, you know, key, I keep this on my bookmarks bar for a, for a very good reason. It's because I'm using it every single day. And so, you know, head, headlines is one way. You know, we talked about, you know, listing descriptions, blogs. Let's talk about blogs. What guys, what, what's a, is there anybody in here that's writing, the, writing a blog right now on their website, real estate blog or something, anybody? Andy, I know we have a number of people in the group, maybe people who aren't in the live session who will be watching this on the replay who do though. So okay. um, it's definitely super valuable. And we also have a number of vlogs, which is interesting because you could really use this as like your transcript. hundred percent. So, so let, let's talk about both. Let's talk about blogs first. So uh, I think uh, let's talk, let's talk about first time home buyers. So when it comes to, you know, how, how can we actually help these people? What, what are some of the pain points that first time home buyers have guys? Anybody know? Down payment. Yeah, they're not sure. Uh, not uh, down payment. Uh, you know, closing costs. Monthly payment. What's what? What's my monthly payment going to be? You know, how do I choose a lender? So let's let's try to come up with a you know a reasonable blog for uh you know for first time home buyers. So. You know, you you can do this a handful of, of different ways. So, like I said, I, I send out a you know an email newsletter once a week. I like to write that myself, and then if I've got if I've got you know uh, you know a, a sentence in there that I think could be reworded, I just tell ChatGPT to reword the you know reword that sentence, and then I'll, I'll throw it into my email newsletter. So I'm, I'm not using ChatGPT to write the whole thing. Because truthfully, I think that's just, a, I think that's intellectually lazy. And I, I think you're just not going to see the results that you want to see. But for the sake of this, uh, you, you know, this, this webinar today, we're going to do this a little bit quicker. So let's say, uh, please write a blog post for first time home buyers addressing some of the most common questions they might have about the process and guys you'll, you'll notice like I, I, I even I, I just noticed this right now and I, I catch myself doing this all the time it's like I'm, I, I feel I, I catch myself talking to this thing like it's a human please would you please summarize instead of just saying like hey summarize this book I say you know please please write a blog post for me little strange but you know we'll roll with it right so please write a blog post for the first time addressing some of the most common questions they might have about the uh, about the process let's see what happens here So are you a first time home buyer? Congrats. Uh, buying your first home can be a, uh, an exciting and rewarding experience, but it can be also a little overwhelming. There are many things to consider and you may have a lot of questions. In this blog post, we'll answer some of the most common questions for first time home buyers uh, about the process. How much house can I afford? Uh, I'm not gonna read all of this, but you know, so how much house can I afford? How do I get pre-approved for a mortgage? What are the closing costs? How much should I offer on the home? How long does the home buying process take? So, you know, guys, I, I mean, you and you can repurpose this content. You know, so to Jeff's point a second ago, you know, you you have you have your blog. You can post this on a blog. You can. Uh, you can take that content and literally make it your script for a vlog. Post it on YouTube. 
You can take it and you can put this into an email drip campaign for marketing purposes. You can, you can do all sorts of stuff. And, and so, you know, what, what this opens up is, you know, people, again, coming back to what I was saying about, you know, the, the writer's block, create, you know, creator's block, writer's block, creator's block, it's sort of being used interchangeably there. It, it, it just, it, it punches through that. It's like, it's like a, you know, writer's block is like that brick wall. This just punches straight through that. You know, again, like this this past weekend, I mean, I, I was writing a blog. I was writing, you know, my email newsletter. And, you know, there were things that, you know, would have stumped me for, you know, 15 minutes as I tried to find out, like, how do I reword this? Where do I put this, this and this? And, it, you know, I just chat, uh, you know, put it quickly into chat GPT and it, and it gives me, it sort of unlocks that next step. So I'm not, I'm not getting stuck on stuff. And so, you know, for people that, quite frankly, are, are, you know, procrastinators, right? Even procrastinators don't even have any excuses now. Because, I mean, this just, I mean, it literally, it, it, it punches through, right? Yeah, Andy, one of the things that kind of comes right into my mind, just seeing you talk through this, and you're, you're such an expert, and I love that, um, is like, I think about uh, agents who are out there who could literally just do like using their business page or whatever they want to use, do a quick poll or a survey of all the all their folks out there, like, you know, what are your biggest concerns about the current market? And then you just kind of get people pulling in and you take your like your top five and have this write a blog post about each of them or a long form, uh, you know, Facebook post and you just pop that out there with some cool graphics, you grab off pexels or whatever. Like this could, it could take your content creation. You could write that quick poll in like 30 seconds by yourself you drop each of these into chat GPT, another two minutes there, grab some images off Pexels. I think five minutes all in and you could have an entire like three weeks worth of content. Like that's that's a sick turnaround time. It, it's, insane. it's insane. Yeah, yeah. So so and that and and Jeff Jeff touched on something that's that's super important there. So he he's he's talking about like reaching out to the leads in their in their database, which these people may be clients, they may not be clients. But guys, like, like at a, at a fundamental level, like, what what is sales all about? Anybody know? Fundamental level. Relating in relationships. Solving a problem. So it it is yeah relationships, but the the answer that I was going for is most specifically with solving problems. Hundred percent. So guys, like. In terms of, you know, we're, we're talking about like, this is amazing for making content, but if you want to make content that sticks and that finds traction with people, write content that solves problems for people. And so when Jeff is saying, you know, go to your, go to your leads and find out like what, what problems do you have? And then write content around that. That's, you know, that's, that's sales 101, baby, Right. That's that's how you get people to start working with you and paying attention to you, right? Even even this call today, you know, when when Jeff reached out about about doing this today, and, and Brian made the introduction, uh, you know, the the problem that was that was on the table was, you know, everybody's talking about ChatGPT, but you know, we nobody really knows how to use it yet, right? So the so the problem today was showing you guys how ChatGPT can be used. So again, it's it's about solving problems, right? So again, if if you wanna if you wanna begin that conversation with leads in your database, yeah, hundred percent. You can take something like this. Again, you can create a vlog around it. You can create a blog. You can create you know put this in a, a email you know drip campaign. You can do all sorts of stuff. And and the odds that you will get a favorable response will go up dramatically. Again, if you're if you're writing about problems that you're your potential customers you're having. Make, making sense, yeah? It totally is. Andy, I've, I've got one more comment on this just because I want to give some of our users who are on here an idea of where this is all headed and also why I think it'll hit a point of diminishing returns. Because I know we have some like old school folks like, well, that's the end, I guess I'll go sell shoes. And you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> right? like there's, there's gotta be that reaction happening on some level for some folks. But I, I don't think that's what's gonna happen. Here's why. Like I can already see an 
end case scenario here, and I'll just roll this out because this is kind of the end of the world scenario. Like you, you could literally have ChatGPT right now generate a list of topics that are the most common topics that people ask about in real estate, and then subsequently create, let's call it blog posts or long form uh, verbiage, you know, uh, content on each of those. You could have that automatically populate over into like Veed.io or something like that, right? To automatically create AI generated voice to text and video with free use uh, graphics and free use video, and then have that automatically post to YouTube and create a YouTube channel. Like literally that could all happen right now. But the reason I don't think that much of that's gonna happen is because the second that all happens, that'll all become really passe. And the user engagement on that type of video content will drop to next to nothing. Um, so I just, I, what, I, what I'm excited, I'm actually excited about this tech. Because what I think is going to happen is it's just going to make human beings more efficient. And I'm all about like high productivity human beings. And I love that your position on all this, Andy, is like, don't, don't worry. This is for two types of people, lazy people trying to replace themselves or people who want to do the work. And now this is another tool in the tool belt. And I agree. It's number two. Like that's where this needs to rock and roll. Which yeah. Awesome. And what, one other point that I want to make here, uh, guys and gals, is... Listen, at the end of the day, like when it comes to sales, people want to work with real people, not robots. Super, I'm going to say it again. Hear me on this. They want to work with real people, not robots, which is why, you know, when I'm sending out an email newsletter, I'm not writing the whole thing with chat GPT because I think that's intellectually lazy. And if anything, you know, it's it, it's it's going to create a dichotomy. It's going to create people that are even more lazy than they already are. And then the people that are still willing to do the work, it is going to add, add maybe a little bit more polish to them and make them a little bit more productive, maybe a lot more productive. But, you know, again, but I'm going to reemphasize this again. People want to work with real people. So, you know, you, you can use all this, use all the tools in front of you. That's the whole point of this, of the webinar today. Use the tools in front of you. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, bring it back to a real person. If, if you have to put on a facade about, you know, Hey, like, you, you know, you're, you're, you're blogging like this person on the internet, but when the people that you're attracting to you, they actually get face to face with you, whether it be in person or on zoom, and you are not the person in real life that you are online. What happens there? Do you guys see the problem? So, so if, if if you're not the if you're not the same person online that you are in real life, guys, it's like forget it. Like you, you can have the best tools in the world, you're not going to sell anything. So, so you use it as a way to free up hours in your day, be more productive. But you know, just just keep that keep that in the back of your head. You you can you know, at the end of the day, you can polish. You can polish a turd up, down, sideways, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be a turd, right? That's so, awesome, so Andy. Are are you? Do you think that this is like an early phase? Like, is this early in your funnel? You know what I mean? Like, is this more lead gener uh, lead generation curiosity peaking? Like, are, or are you seeing this uh, later stage as well, where you're still, you know, uh, cultivating relationships, integrating this into follow up campaigns? Like, where do you see this tool really belonging in the ecosystem of lead generation? Hundred percent. So th this is a little bit more of a higher higher level question. So let me let me just illustrate this. Uh, you know, in terms of like what a funnel is. So we've got you know the the lower part of the funnel, the middle part of the funnel, the upper part of the funnel. So as as leads come in, you know they they are they have a general you know at the top of the funnel there's a general interest there. They're not really ready quite you know quite ready to go. But as they move down the funnel, they you know they get closer to transacting. So what Jeff is essentially asking is like, where, where in the funnel are you seeing the most success with actually using something like this? In my humble opinion, I'm not saying this is the, you know, this is the only answer here. I think it's extremely effective in the top, like the top part of the funnel to get people to show an interest in maybe your brand or your content or to maybe get them to raise their hands. So coming back to the first time home buyer question, if you have a drip campaign that's been built around chat GPT and first time home buyer 
uh, you know, content. And let's say on the third step of that drip campaign, you know, they have, you know, we have, we have, you know, let, let's just, let's just say it's, you know, it's the third step. It's this third question. What are closing costs? And we get a response, you know, about, you know, Hey, I'd like to talk with somebody about, you know, closing costs. That's, that's, you know, early on in the process, it, this is not something like, you know, I, I guess you could use this for lower parts of the funnel, but, but honestly, like, it, like for lower parts of the funnel, I want to be face to face with that person, like on, on zoom or in person. I, I don't want to be, you know, sending emails for stuff like this. I, I need to be face to face with that person. You know what I'm saying? So they can, it's like, they can, they can see me. They can hear the tone of my voice. They can see that I care. Right. So I, I don't, Jeff, does that sort of answer your question a little bit? Absolutely. So, yeah. It, it really helps a lot. And the other thing I want to remind everybody, because, you know, most of our users here are already with us already um, agents with eXp Realty, which is awesome. Um, high five. Love you guys. Um, and if you're a guest, that's incredible. Thank you for being here today. But I want to mention, for those of you who are already with us, you have access to a free blog platform directly within your KV Core site. And this would be the way for you to, like, literally one minute a week, you could just build out a blog post or, you know, twice a week, boom, 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 and just start getting some content out there, syndicate that across your very various channels, and now connect it with a built-in lead gen, lead capture device that's already integrated in a system you're already using. So like, you don't need to go out and build a hundred new parts. This just gives you the content that you were missing. And the chances are the reason you weren't doing the content was just time, right? It's like, yeah. I don't want to write a blog. What am I going to say? Now, you know. <laughs> yeah, and some, something that I, I want to touch on real quick because again, this is something that I've I've listened to. I'm not super clued on this, but it's people a lot smarter than I am. So, with regards to the SEO side of this, there are already soft pieces of software out there that apparently can detect if something has been written by Chat GPT or not. So that that is that is the other part of the equation here, right? Because you have all this content that's being created by a computer. For example, like classrooms. Let's take a step back to you know, high school again. When you had to write an essay, I mean, like I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush. If I was if I was a freshman in high school, I had access to this. Like I'd be using it like nonstop to write my you know my you know 15 page paper. No, I mean like let's be real, right? So uh, you know, so that that side of the equation is coming now. It it remains to be seen. I mean, there's so many things to consider here, like. Like what even happens to SEO at that point? Because like the whole concept of like web pages is that they have to rank on Google. Well, if I'm getting all my answers from this, like what happens to web pages at that point, right? So that's besides besides the point. The other thing that that is an unknown right now is whether Google is going to be able to detect that this has been written by Chat GPT and whether they're going to prioritize that lower in search results. So coming back to what I was saying about you know the the lazy approach is to just let chat gpt write the whole thing my my strong really honest suggestion would be take you know take like like do do some of the work do do some of the work make it your own if if you're just posting whatever you know whatever is popping out on here um just keep in mind there's like millions of people using this and and that number is like growing every day so so like there's going to be a lot of content that quite frankly is going to look sort of the same, right? And and to to Jeff's point, you know, it's it's sort of going to be like sort of passe. Like I sort of agree with that. If you have a bunch of content that's all like sort of like the same, you know, robot, right? It's like you know, do we really want that? And in in my in my humble opinion, that like the answer is no. Like it, it's got to come back to a human at some point. Like if if we're dealing about if we're dealing with sales. Well, and Andy, I love that you said, you know, like you can polish a turd, it's still just a turd, but which is hilarious. And it's super true. And ultimately, I mean, one of the things I wrote in the chat is like, if the entire herd, and by herd, I just mean like people being lemmings are all going to chase one thing. First off, should you know about that thing? Hell yes, which is what we're doing today, right? We're informing, we're educating, we're gaining awareness over a tool. But as I also wrote in the chat, like use the tool, don't be a tool, right? Like that, there's a yeah. huge difference. And I think, like, ultimately, sure, of course, Google is going to be able to tell. Google Google's also about to release their AI engine because of all the market yeah. compression. Of it. So they're going to release yeah. Bard, and like that's going to be the end of the world as well. And and but also, you know, there there were there have been existing tools out there that can rewrite things that are already written, like uh, what is it, Chat.ai yes. and yes. 
Yeah, yeah Jasper yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like, there's a lot of this that's going to happen where eventually it's almost like the internet's going to be self-propagating. And so some of what you can do right now is reduce lag time doing dumb stuff that you shouldn't be doing anyway. And what I love about this is, it, listen, real estate is still a relationship game. I love that earlier Heather said relationships, right? I agree. It's relationships. It's problem solving based on those relationships. And if this is a problem solving game, Ultimately, we need to be in direct communication with people. If this can take heavy lifting off of our plates, you're not spending six and a half hours designing a flyer that should take you six and a half minutes. Now you can spend the six and a half minutes, feel still productive and go spend your time developing real relationships so you can be on the correct side of the business. I wouldn't think that now you like work for, you know, chat GPT. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to do what everyone did when Facebook Facebook became so exciting. It's like everyone started creating Facebook ads and a lot of those agents made money and most people who went that direction just spent all their time trying to figure out how to use the platform and just wasted a lot more time. So yeah. don't do that. Use the tool. Yeah. Can I jump in here real quick? Agree. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Hey, so what's up, Andy? So glad that you're here and I hope everybody's getting as much value out of this as I am. Um, and I think you guys could probably see why I wanted to get Andy in here because he's just a wealth of knowledge. But um, I think what's really, really crazy about this technology is when you think about like to echo kind of some of the point of what was was said there is like the application of this in other ways to where you're not just utilizing it to like write an article for you, but you're utilizing it to tell you like, what are the top five reasons somebody should move from California to Oregon, right? Something to that effect. And then you have that list now, the bullet points, and then you can go make a video on YouTube about those top five things. Or, you know, like, whereas you might take, you know, a couple hours to come up with those five points, and then you now go make a video. Like, you can have it give you those those things and some some great data points to be able to utilize in your content. Um, so I think it's just stuff like that. This is just such a a time saver, such like an efficiency gain that people are going to be able to get in, in if they can utilize it correctly. And I think I just, I love the emphasis that you're, um, that you're saying, Andy, and that Jeff's saying is, is just like, don't try to use this as, you know, taking all of the work out for you, but just leverage it as um, an additional resource to be able to give you something to, to go off of something to work off of um, and then make it your own. And so I think the more people are able to do that, the more powerful this is going to be for you. So um, and anyways, and another quick just shout out to Andy. I think this is just we had such a hard time of like nailing down what topic um, to even talk about, because Andy is just such like a crazy wealth of knowledge on things like this chat GPT and like systems for your business, uh, like newsletters, like just efficiency, all just a wild amount of stuff that. I think um, you guys are going to just follow him on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and you'll see. Like, he's just comes out with just amazing stuff every day. Uh, and I just can't say enough good things about this guy. So, uh, thanks again, Andy, for being here. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, dude. I super appreciate the kind words. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Um, I think, uh, are, are we, I don't know how we're doing on time. Are, are we coming up on time here or what's, uh, Jeff? No, we've still got 30, but what, you know, what we can do is start to open up for Q and a with people if you want, um, or if you've got more that you'd like to cover, that's amazing. Um, okay. I do want to give people, I know that this has to raise questions for people, especially if this is a new concept for them. And so I want to make sure that we have time for that of like, can you do this? Can you do that? Or how would I approach this? And and quite frankly, also beyond that, just to double down on what Brian said, it's like pretty much impossible to say what Andy's an expert in because there are too many subcategories there. <laughs> Andy's a really clever guy who's a resourceful thinker. And those are my favorite types of people. It's very obvious just listening to him speak. You guys have probably already picked up on the fact that he gets business at a super high level, and which is part of why he's just helping us understand something that's a uh, bleeding edge today. Joanne has her hand up though, Andy. Do you mind like jumping in on some Q&A a little bit? Let's 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 do it. Yeah, absolutely. Jo Joanne, what do you got? Hi. Thanks for being here. So my first question when you said that you like Google is not on your, you know, toolbar and you use this instead of Google, that just like went right over my head. Like, let's say my dog has a tummy ache. I'm going to go to GP whatever and ask them about that. What is your, what are you saying? So, so can I share my screen again? Is that cool? Do it. Let's, let's, let's bring this up. So, uh, my dog has a, what'd you say? Tummy ache. Uh, what do I do? 
and listen, I'm not saying I'm a vet, but you you just you use this for long enough, you start to realize like, wow, there's a lot of different use cases here. So withhold food. The first step is to withhold food for 12 to 24 hours. Give your dog's digestive system some time to rest and recover. This means no treats, table scraps, dog food. Offer bland food. I know, I know for a fact, and, and by the way, I have a dog. Both of these I agree with. I'm not a vet, but I agree with both of those. Monitor your dog. Keep an, keep an eye on your dog's behavior and systems. Uh, they continue to vomit. You know, use over the oh, it's just a it's just like a results engine just like google is what you're saying it is it is so so when i'm saying like it's it's google without the search results like i i literally that's exactly what i mean yeah it's like it's it's taking and and listen i don't know where they're getting all these answers from but they're compiling it from everywhere and you know if, if you were to look up let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison here let's just take this and this, this I, I was doing this for the longest time. I had both of these just up side by side, comparing the results, right? So, so Google has got this this version of this. Like this, this is Google Google's version. But you know, this answer, um, I have to click on this, right? And you know, I have to read through. You know, I have to read through stuff. Yeah, and a lot of them are ads, or they're just trying to get you to, you know do something other than get the answer to your question. That's exactly right. So like th this right here, this is an ad. Somebody, so when it says ad right there, somebody's paying for that. And, and, and by the way, that's, in, that's Google's entire business model is advertising. So, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit of an existential risk for Google. You know, I hate to say it. Right. But, you know, in terms of like the speed to get an, the speed to get an end result, right. So we're talking about in this case doing research. So three remedy. Okay, so let's let's say I click on here. You know, I got a few a few pieces of information here. Which, by the way, if I had to guess, Andy, I would guess that when Bard comes out, there's going to be a pay to play option or like a with ads option, and then they're going to sell ad ad space. Like, do you have more questions about your dog's so upset stomach? Go here, and then there will be like retargeting. There's going to be all the same stuff. Yeah. This is my guess. It's a like little prediction, but anyway. I agree, and one of, one of the other things that I've heard mentioned uh, is is actually like citing citing where you where they got this information. That would be extremely helpful totally. to know, like where, like okay, like like this this sounds right, but where'd you get this info from, right? So I, I think that's that's something that for sure is coming, and and maybe you could you could buy an ad here, like you're giving an answer and it says like, you know, this, this answer is an ad. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I agree with you hundred percent like that. That's the direction that I think things are going. So um, yeah. Jo Joanne, does that sort of answer your question though? Yeah, that was really good. Thanks for demonstrating that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Uh, great question. What um, I, 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 let me bring up the chat. I know quite a few people have been, uh, uh, messaging in here in here. Um, so I, I saw somebody was asking, like, is there a waiting list for chat GPT plus? I, I didn't have a, I didn't have to wait. Uh, I don't know if that's because I, I signed up pretty early for this. So I don't know if that's because I signed up early or not, but I, I just, I just paid for the plus version like last week. Uh, so I, I didn't have to wait. Um, so Christina right. says no waiting list. It just got it now. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, let's see what else. Um, let's see. Oh, Joe, sorry. I see Joe there. Joe, we've met before, haven't we? We have not, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I, this is all, this is all great stuff. Oh, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I see Joe Yates up there. Joe said, oh, there's two Joe, there's two Joes. Joe, you're, are you friends with Gary Massa? I think. I am friends with Gary Moss. That's I think we're friends on Facebook. Yeah, that's how I don't I don't right. think maybe we ha maybe we haven't met. Uh, let let me uh, let me go to Joe Joe Sailing first, and then Joe Yates. I'll come back come back to you real quick. Joe Joe Sailing, do you have a question? Uh, no 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 no. I mean I I'm just saying that. Well, and as far as play, playing with Chat GPT, you can uh, actually have it cite. So if you said my dog has tummy aches, what do I do? Include four sites. You can do that, and it will show you. But I do think that this is it's a little dangerous to be trying to trust this over Google because it's still AI. And so if we said, what should I do with COVID? 
you don't want to use like AI to figure it out because it's web crawling to get all this information. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Like I said, I, I think based on the conversations that I've listened to, I think the citing of information in these answers, like it, that, and that was the first thing that I, I was thinking about, like, okay, we're getting all these answers. So just, just to give you an example, one of the things that I tried when I first started playing around with this is give me the top 10 uh, barbecue restaurants in Austin, Texas. Right. And I, I was like, there's, I mean, there's no way this is, this is going to come up with this, but here you go. Right. So it starts, it starts giving these answers and ranking each of these restaurants. Now, if, if I'm a restaurant owner, the, what, what's the first thought going through my question? If I'm a restaurant owner, you how do I get on that list? What's up? I would be asking, how do I get on that list? Yeah, how do I get on that list or who's making that decision? How, how, are, how are those search results being compiled? And so, you know, again, new technology, lots of questions, right? I, and, and all, but, but, you know, that to, um, to Joe's point there, uh, I, I do think that, you know, citing of information is coming for sure. And, and a lot of people are talking about that. So 100% agree. Um, let's see, Joe, uh, Joe Yates, what's going on? Well, circling back, yeah, I love Gary Massa. I love a dude. A lot of fun. Um, no, I, I just, uh, you know, I, as a self-proclaimed um, not real techie guy, this is so, this is pretty badass. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I don't mind writing things, but I don't for this, for, you know, come close to having the the vocabulary, the the words at your your fingertips to be able to save so much time. To me, it's it's something where if you're going to do a blog, like you said, not being lazy, because I'm already pretty critical. I think a lot of people are as far as making sure it looks exactly they, the way they want it to. But to have something that could do a quick rough draft for you, it's like 97% complete. And then you can go and just put your little personal spin in a few different places. I think it just say just an absolutely ton of time. And I mean, I think it's really cool. Um, it's kind of funny because I don't know what, what the reason is, but as you're explaining this, the whole tech thing, I mean, I do, I was like probably one of the last guys to start using zip forms and DocuSign. I wanted to fill out the contract by hand and run it over to you to freaking get it signed. So, I mean, I am a, I am definitely a laggard as Simon Sinek would say when it comes to tech, but when I see this, it makes me want to do all tech. Because it's almost like I don't want to sell shoes. So you, you almost have to, this is like the final straw where it's like, dude, are you buying in or are you not buying in? Because all normal shit is going away. And um, so anyway, I just think what you're explaining is really, really cool. It's really, really, really valuable. And to what Brian said, I mean, I was already Googling you and trying to check out more info. So um, yeah, I'll definitely dive deeper. I, I, I pre appreciate you sharing. I appreciate the kind words as well. Um, you know, it, it's something that, as you were speaking, I, I had a thought just now that I, I hadn't really, well, I guess I, I sort of thought a little bit about this, but it's, it's worth mentioning to everybody on this call for the people that are creative, like naturally creative, like you want to just go create stuff, which, you know, put me in that category. I just, I love building stuff. This is amazing. It's so helpful because it, it takes, it, it takes a, a lot of the drudgery out of creating content like you get you get to stay focused on the stuff that is fun and and you know again when i'm when i'm saying like it is the best tool that i've ever found for eliminating writer's block like guys like creating content it is so frustrating when you get stuck like you're you're looking at a sense you're like oh my god i can't figure out what to say here and i can't figure out how to rewrite this without sounding like an idiot right and and so like you know, it, it's going to allow the creative people and the people that are willing to, that, that are serious about their business and they want to put in the work, like it's, it's going to, it's going to really uh, help your business a lot. Um. So yeah, anyways, that, that's, that's what I wanted to share there. Um. Uh, Joe, Joe Salen, what's, what's going on? Well, so I do want, I just want to share a couple of things of what I have used chat GPT for. And I mean, my brain is still expanding, trying to go, Hey, how can I do this? For our website pages, community pages. So if, if we're saying, hey, we we sell in 
like say Beaverton, Oregon, I was able to say, you know, give me a description of moving to Beaverton, Oregon. And so that way I'm giving content. I expanded upon my kind of about me that's in Zillow, LinkedIn. And I, I copied the words and I said, rewrite this. And then I, I said, okay, focus on blank, blank, blank. And my, my thing, which I was like, eh, it's okay. Came out amazing. It is still truly me. I shifted it all around, but it actually sounds like something and I didn't have to pay a copywriter. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I also sent an email to saying, okay, if I'm selling, if I'm sending seller property disclosures to my buyers and it put an email that talks about what a seller property disclosure is. So we can give our clients so much more information just throughout the process, buyers, sellers, um, prospects, even if we're trying attraction, I bet you we could do something to get attraction of joining uh, the community and EXP. 100%. So, and th this is, I mean, we, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but I, I forget who said it, but it, uh, you know, or I think it was Abe said that he had it, he had it summarize a book, right? And so like, for example, you know, buying, buying real estate, the seller's disclosure, even, you know, you know, even the one, you know, the one to four family contract, right? Some of that stuff is just confusing and you want to explain it in simple terms. So please summarize a property, you know, seller property disclosure. This is just, it helps you put stuff in clear terms to the person that you're trying to serve, right? And, and so, I mean, what, what I strongly recommend, and, and, you know, really the goal of today was really just to, you know, open your minds a little bit. You know, when, when you play around with this, you start to see all of the use cases. And, 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 and my honest, you know, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of like riding a bike. If you start using it every day, you start saying, oh, well, what about chat GPT for this? Well, okay, that works. Well, what about this? And then, you know, also to, to Joe's point, one of, the, one of the most important things that I have found with chat GPT, don't, don't rely on the first answer. The first answer is usually fluff. It's, it's, it's a starting point. That's, that's like the, it's like you're, you're you know, if you're, if you're thinking about it like a baseball game, you're in the first inning. Go go deeper. Rewrite this. Put a little bit of humor on this. Do this and, and go. You know, go like three, four, five, six innings. You know, get get through the whole game, and eventually you're going to have very close to what you're looking for, right? So so you know, focus on asking the right questions. Rewrite. You know, suggesting rewrites, things like that. Um, and truthfully, is anybody here on TikTok? A few people. A little bit. Um, if you go into TikTok and just type in the hashtag ChatGPT, there's tons of videos of people testing out all create all sorts of crazy stuff. Like we we scratched the surface today on on what you know people are doing with this stuff. So if if you really want to go down the rabbit hole, that's that's what I recommend. So um, anybody else got any questions? Let me pull up the chat again. Make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, show chat. Andy, while you're checking that out, I, I do want to tell everybody on here. I mean, this is one of those things like, first off, this is going to be bleeding edge. It is already bleeding edge. Make sure that you get on the platform. So this is one of those moments where it's like, go reserve your spot, right? You know, Christina just jumped through the line today. Obviously, there was not a wait list. There was a wait list for a period because I think they released this and like crashed the internet for a minute. Um, and so, you know, same thing's going to happen when Bard rolls out from Google. Um, some people are like, that might be more powerful. Apparently it made a mistake on day one, but you know, like it was an innocent mistake. Um, and part of that is because, you know, it's also still relying on data that it's not intuiting. It's not based on facts. It's based on submitted user data that's on the internet, right? Which is our collective body of information. But there's, I think some of us know that not everything that's written on the internet happens to be true. <laughs> yeah. And so if it happens to, you know, crawl or index something that isn't actually true and then believes it to be true because it got syndicated in 12 locations or whatever, that can happen, um, you know, poorly. The other thing I'll mention is so far, this is not active crawling, right? And the, the amount of processing technology that would be required for that is unconscionable. Um, in fact, the, the internet still isn't crawled, you know, every single day. That's, that's not a thing. And the reason I mentioned that, and for those who aren't tracking with me, you can't go on to chat GPT and be like, 
write a blog post about everything that's going on in Tucson, Arizona this weekend. It's not going to work. Um, because it doesn't know what's going on this weekend in Tucson, Arizona, because it's relying on dated, um, content. Yeah. So, so that, that will be a little bit where it starts to disconnect or you start to fail a little bit. Yeah. Um, But for now. 100%. Hundred percent. So I I saw I saw a comment in here from Scott Gephardt. Scott, are you still in here, Scott? Is Scott is still in here, or he head out. Yeah, I'm know. still in here. Okay, so Scott Scott says people will be getting even dumber. I I could not agree with you more, honestly. So if if you know if there, there's going to be a lot of people that are are intellectually lazy, and and this is literally going to make them even dumber. We got a we got a whole bunch, whole generation of this. You guys see this? You guys know what I'm talking about? Like of, of this? Um, you you just you you know I, I, this is and this is you know sort of touched on the philosophical side of things. I went to a restaurant. Uh, I don't know. This was like Monday night, and you know it, it's so fascinating. Like when you go out to eat, uh, and and you you're just sitting down down there eating, and you know you just put your phone away for a minute and just you know take a look around you, right? People these days have forgotten how to have conversations with other people. They, they truly have. And, and the reason why is because it's this. They think that this is real life. So, you know, when, when, when we're talking about like, you know, you use this and, and, and you know, don't, don't be lazy about it. This is what Scott's referring to. People will be getting even dumber. Like there's going to be a big subset of the population that's just going to, you know, re- rely on this for everything. And it, it and, and and guys, what this is going to do is it's it, it starts teaching you what to think instead of how to think. That's what Scott's really saying there. Yes, Scott. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually like just so you know, I think the thing's amazing. I've been using it for a couple of months for all kinds of different things. So I I think it also gives people on like this call a reason a way to stand out and do things use it for time like you're saying like make things quicker or get ideas or things like that but ultimately um you know can make people who really use it correctly stand out even more it gives even it's going to make can, to me it's going to dumb down the industries and then give us even a better reason to stand out yeah, I, 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 I 100% <laughs> exactly. agree with you. Like, like I said, and the people that are so willing, willing to put out the work, those are the people that are, that are going to stand out. That's I could not agree with you more on that. Mike, Mike, what's up, dude? Jo- it looks like we're joining uh, you with your wa- uh, on your walk today, man. Yeah, man. So uh, I, honestly, this is kind of my everyday work attire. I, I wear this to the gym. I don't know if you can see it, but basically it says I'm the baddest dude on the planet. Let's talk about real estate. <laughs> But, uh, but anyways, man, again, like everybody's been saying like air high five, man, because like, this is like rock star stuff. I absolutely love this. And I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, the next thing is like Jeff said, or somebody with the community said, uh, dude, it it creates less competition for me, man. Like if if people are going to get dumber by God, I'm going to use this to make me a little bit smarter. And, uh, I know what my strengths are and I know where they're not. And I think like, kind of what you've been saying is like, use this to make your weak area stronger. Right. Yeah. And, uh, um, I'm a, I'm a decently creative person and I'm, I'm a great writer, but it's my least favorite thing to do. And to put this thing to work, to take some of that off of my plate has been amazing. And, uh, I definitely encourage everybody to give this a shot because I am like the least, I'm the least technical person on this call. I guarantee it. And, uh, like the Joe might give me a run for my money, but I'm pretty close. And, uh, um, this, this definitely is easy to use. Um, you know, and if you're, if you use it on your phone, it's a little harder, uh, uh to get used to, but you can even like speak it in there. Right. And, uh, you know, ask your questions via, uh, via voice command or whatever. And it'll, you know, it'll start spitting out answers. So I absolutely love this thing. And, uh, I think it's, I think it's one of the coolest tools for real estate. And I don't at all uh, see it making me any dumber. So if you use yeah. it the right way, man, let's uh, let's put this thing to use and, and get on it now before everybody else jumps on the train, figures it out. Yeah, that, that's that's such an interesting point there. By the way, like it, like gu- guaranteed, 
what what um what scott said like it's gonna make people dumber like i that is i i put the probability of that at like 99.99999 percent it's gonna make a lot of people dumber but you know what uh what mike was saying just there a second ago listen if, if you're using it to make yourself smarter guys like that is your competitive edge right so you know if, if you're willing to put in the work you know it, it's gonna it's going to help expand your business for sure like like we're 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 using this in like so many different use cases right now and and again like we're we're not being intellectually lazy about it but we're helping us do things better than we were previously that's that's what it comes down to so um anybody else got anything i think um Andy, I have something since since we're kind of waiting for people to to post some questions there in the chat. Like if people are interested in in reaching out, maybe having a conversation with you or asking more questions about what it is that you do, how you help agents with their business, um how what's your preferred method of people reaching out? Um I already posted your home address in the chat, so no, I'm just kidding. Um what's your but what's your preference, man? Yeah, so shoot me a message on Facebook. I'm there pretty frequently. I'll okay. put my I'll put my email in the chat there. Cool. So if you want to if you want to shoot me an email, shoot me an email. Um, ha, ha, happy. It, it could be anything. If you if you have questions about anything, um, you know, whether it's 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 stuff related to your business, it could be stuff that you know maybe it's personal stuff. I don't know. I talk with people about all sorts of stuff all day, every day. So if you want to chat, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. Shoot me a you know shoot shoot me a message on Facebook, and happy to do so. So. Cool. That's really great, man. I appreciate it. And I have to say for everybody on here, you know, one of the things that we're really passionate about inside the community is always really trying to track down what's what's happening right now in real estate. What is it that agents need to know, need to be on top of, need to be aware of so that your business is always staying cutting edge? Because our belief is that cutting edge agents produce cutting edge results, probably are leading the pack instead of following. Um, and this is a leading type of an indicator today. So um, my belief is that everything that we're talking about today is really still at the very forefront of what's happening in modern real estate. Modern agents are are hip to this. And whether or not you're like, oh, I'm going to use that every day, or it's like, okay, now I know about it. So it can be in my arsenal. I think that knowledge is still power. Um, and ultimately, you don't have to know everything, but you do need to know what the most modern tools are. And so I, I really have to say thank you, Andy. This was an awesome presentation. Really appreciate you bringing it to the forefront. Thanks again, Brian, for lining up the call. Appreciate you. I, I, and by the way, I appreciate you having me on. And, and Brian, I appreciate the intro. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. absolutely. Cool. Rocking. Appreciate, well, like, appreciate you guys hopping on. Yeah. I think if we're not seeing other questions, let's go ahead and wrap a couple minutes early, guys. Um, thank you all for being here today. If you have any questions and you're a guest today uh, about the community, please reach out to the person who invited you here. Learn a little bit more about what we do inside of our private communities, um, inside of our members only login area, how we support agents, how we help our agents grow their businesses every single month, every single day. It's absolutely awesome. And I have to say, it's just a privilege and an honor to hang out with you guys. My favorite part of the week here on our Core 90 training. You guys are amazing. Um, and we will see you next week. Um, we have a, a good friend of ours coming in talking all about YouTube next week. YouTube's on the docket. So it's going to be really fun. We're going to have a great time. Get ready for it. We're going to have a good day. All right, guys.